In this video, we're going to correct the gradients in the three images using multi-scale gradient correction. We'll correct the color image first, as it's the most straightforward. In a color image, we don't just have information about the gradient brightness, but also its color. This will help us assess whether the result is correct. In the top part of the image, we can see the color shifts to a greenish hue, while at the bottom it is more reddish. Let's create a preview and open MGC, which is in the Gradient Correction section. Remember, we need to load the Mars database if we want to use it in MGC. If we want to have it preloaded, we can set this via the Preferences button. We click on Add here, go to the directory where we have the Mars databases, select both Mars and Mars U, and then click on OK. Now, every time we want to add the Mars databases, we no longer need to search for them by clicking on the Add XMARS Files button. All we need to do is click on Default Files to add them automatically. We've added both databases because we selected them both via the Preferences menu. However, the nebula in these images is only found in the Mars database, not the Mars U database. Although both databases are enabled, MGC will therefore only use the Mars database. Let's apply the process with the default settings. We can see that this field is very well covered by Mars because there are six images in each filter. In this field, we have around five hours of exposure time in each image, so we may have around 30 hours of exposure as reference data. Here you can see that we're modeling the vertical gradient from green to reddish very well. To improve the flux scaling of the objects, we can try lowering the gradient scale to 256 pixels, for example. This makes it easier to see if there are object remnants, so we can try to minimize them. For example, here we can see traces of the Tulip Nebula. And this dark nebula is inverted. We can try modifying the scale factors manually to see if we can minimize the objects. If we change the scale factor to 0.9, we enhance the traces of the nebula. Let's try 1.1. Now we've reduced those traces. Let's try with 1.2 now. This is even better, but objects are starting to appear at the bottom. This is probably because we have a multiplicative effect mixed into the gradient, and MGC only works with additive gradients. Let's stick with 1.1. And now we're going to change the gradient scale. 256 pixels is too small a scale for these gentle gradients, and all it does is enhance the object remnants. Let's try with 1024 pixels and we'll uncheck the Show Gradient Model box so that we can see the result. Here it is. Now, let's see if we can improve the correction by lowering the gradient scale. This is the result with a gradient scale of 512 pixels, and this is with 1024. A gradient scale of 512 pixels corrects this greenish edge of the gradient better, and it's quite subtle. But it also corrects a small residual gradient at the bottom. So, we're going to stick with a gradient scale of 512.
As the gradients are similar in all the images, we're going to apply MGC with the same settings to the other masters. To apply MGC to the luminance image, we need to select the Mars L-band in the gray filter. And now, to correct the H-alpha image, we need to change the gray filter to the Mars H-alpha band. The difference is very subtle. This area must actually be darker than it was. In other words, in the correct representation of this image, this area will be darker and this area brighter. Although it seems contradictory, the initial image, which had more uniform lighting, was actually incorrect. With the Mars database and MGC, we can preserve the natural gradients of objects in a much more objective way as the image is compared with a wide field external reference. Now we have the five bands of the image with the corrected gradients. The next step is the color calibration.